I've done over 500 videos on dental subjects and other endo-related topics, but today I wanted to take a break and share with you one of the several hobbies that I've developed during this pandemic. In a previous video, I shared with you and I asked you some of the hobbies that you probably have picked up during this 2020 pandemic, and a lot of you mentioned different things, including cooking. So what I figured to do is maybe I'll share with you my culinary attempt during this pandemic for cooking the perfect steak. I've always wanted to learn how to cook restaurant quality steak at home, but always fell short of this goal every time I tried. So during this pandemic, I did a bunch of research on how to cook a restaurant quality steak at home. And today I'll share with you my findings. All right, cooking the perfect steak is pretty simple. It essentially involves only two main things you need to know, quality meat and quality controlled cooking techniques. So essentially everything about a good steak starts by the meat. So all of this stuff that we have in our past about marination of the beef, all of those things are only for poorer quality meats. If you get a really good quality meat, then you don't need to do any marination. This is why USDA has classification of different kinds of beef from you know choice prime and so on and prime is basically what you want to get prime is the type of meat that has adequate marbleization and what marbleization is is the fat that is basically interwoven into the muscle and that gives it that juiciness and tenderness and the flavor of the beef but Today we have a special treat because I, the highest quality of the beef, or at least in terms of the expense, some of the specially prepared types of meats, uh, the Japanese types of meats, the Wagyu beef and so on. And I have today a Wagyu A5, which is a specially marbleized type of a beef that's in the New York strip, which is my favorite kind of cut for a steak. We're gonna try to cook this and find out how it goes. So the quality of the meat is number one, go with the prime type of a beef, whatever cut you like, whether it's, I like the strip, I also like a ribeye, then I like a filet mignon. It all has to do with the kind of amount of fat that you wanna have, how lean you want your beef to be, but you certainly do need a little bit of fat, at least in there, in order to give it some flavor. All right, so here is our cut of Wagyu A5. So we now have a quality beef, and then the question is, how can we adequately prepare this in a way that is predictable? All right, so in order to do that, we have several different techniques. Historically, you can put that in a barbecue, in a charcoal barbecue, ideally, so you can get a little the smokiness. The problem with any of those barbecue techniques where you try to create a crust and then cook the inside is that you cannot have a predictable outcome about the cooking temperature inside. So you are running the risk of overcooking or undercooking it. And if you want to have a good quality meat and be able to taste all the flavor of the beef that you have paid so much for to get, you want to go with something that's medium or medium rare in terms of the cooking temperature inside. I like my temperature to be at around 130, 35 degrees. So it's kind of a medium rare. And in order to achieve that kind of a precision, you can use a thermometer. A probe thermometer is basically a good little uh, trick to use and this thing goes in the middle of the beef during the cooking process and you can find out what kind of temperature you have but i found through my research that a much easier and better and more predictable method of getting that exact temperature that you want and is fail proof is the idea of cooking sous vide now sous vide cooking let's take a look obviously being dentist we're going to have to focus here on the idea of uh, here sous vide cooking requires a little container that will then uh, you will be filling up with water the idea is very simple you have to vacuum seal your steak and then after you season it you vacuum seal it and then you place it under water in the sealed bag under vacuum that has a thermal mechanism of this uh, little device here that goes on the container and it heats up the water to a predictable temperature of 133 degrees and it keeps it at that 133 degrees fahrenheit consistently for about a couple of hours and after doing that you're going to be able to get your steak out and it would have a exact temperature of 133 degrees all across what's nice about this technique is that it's foolproof you can't go wrong and you're going to get exactly a temperature that you want at the center of your steak so let's quickly do that then go from there today we also have a little wine that's going to be pairing with this and that's one of my favorite wines also is the chateauneuf de pape this one's a 2014 it's a really nice uh, bottle of wine we're going to pair that with a wagyu a5 and get a little taste and see if we can screw this piece of beef or 
is it true that the sous vide cooking is fail proof? Now, this sous vide cooking is a reverse sear method, which means that we're gonna cook the inside of the steak first, but then we need to create some type of a crust on the outside because the steak, part of the tastiness of it is that caramelization that occurs on the outside and that charcoalization that occurs on the outside. So how do we do that? Normally, if you do have a charcoal barbecue, that would be the best way to just kind of do that over coal so you can get that smokiness flavor in there as well. But here living in downtown Boston, I don't have an actual barbecue here, uh, but another way to do that is to use a flamethrower or some kind of a torch that's very high temperature. And that's what we're gonna use to create the glaze or the sear on the outside outside after the cook is steak and the steak is cooked all on the inside all right so let's do that let's put some water in here vacuum seal the steak after uh, seasoning it and of course as i mentioned before all you need to do to season a steak of this uh, quality is to just use salt and pepper that's all you need and to vacuum seal we're going to use the vacuum seal that comes with this particular method of cooking this comes with a little sheet that you put the steak in after seasoning it and then you are going to vacuum seal it in here all right so let's take a quick look here first let's go ahead and season our steak because that's the first thing we need to do so we're going to season on both sides it's very important to season both sides here we're going to add a little bit of salt first make sure you season generously here you need to have a good amount of salt here and season on all four sides i'm going to do I like a good amount of pepper on mine. I'm a big fan of pepper. Okay, so make sure you've seasoned all sides here. And now next, we're gonna have to put that in a little um, sealed container. Okay, once you have created your little sealed, your bag there, sealed on one side, the point here is now to place the steak inside the bag so we get a nice little opening here we're going to use this little thing that's kind of the equivalent of a extra large cotton pliers we're going to take our steak and place it inside the bag in the center and now what we have is we have our steak centered here in the bag now we're going to close the top and seal the bag it's important to get all the air out since the air is a non-conductor and that's going to prevent the heat from reaching the steak while under vacuum it's a little different than just sealing because you need to get all the air out since air is a non-conductor of heat and we need to get all the air out here to get a good connection there you can see some of the just coming out and now what we have is we have a vacuum pack piece of Wagyu A5 that's been already seasoned and it's ready to go. So the next step here is to prepare our bath. We're going to put water in there and then we're going to set the thermometer at 133 degrees so that it would be ready to go. All right, here we go. That's our sealed Wagyu A5. All right, so we have reached temperature 133 degrees and a half, and we have spent the past two hours and about 15 minutes or so just kind of waiting for this thing to, to develop. So as we get rid of the lid here, now next thing we're gonna take this thing out and you can see it has some juices in there and it's been now cooked fully inside out. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this out of there and put it on a little surface so we can talk about how to sear it. Okay, our steak is here and it has been cooking now in its own juices, so it should be completely tender and well cooked at 133 degrees all across. So this steak is actually ready to eat. However, at this stage, we need to create a crust first because that caramelization on the outside is going to be the key. As I mentioned before, this can be done several different ways. The main key ingredient is to make sure that your steak is dry prior to creating that crust so you can get a very quick crust outside. And then the best way to create that indoors is by using a blowtorch. So we're gonna go a little bit of Quentin Tarantino here at this point. And I'm gonna use this uh, torch, which is gas operated and works nicely. And basically the way it works is we're gonna create a little bit of flame here and we're going to use this flame to sear off our steak externally this is a very nice uh, flamethrower if you will 
and it could use a very high temperature to get a very nice sear on the outside part of the steak immediately. So let's have a little stand here. We'll put this here and this here. And then let's get ready to create our sear. Okay, just make sure that everything, you could do this outside or you can do it inside. The key here is to make sure that the area is safe, there's nothing flammable nearby. Let's get going. One side is done. Now we're gonna just turn this over to do the other side. There you go. Here we go, voila. It should be all done now on both sides. It's looking great. I like it a little bit charboiled on, on the outside. So I've cooked it a little bit extra because that's the way I like it. I look at you and I think I must have done something good to deserve you. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and try this now. We don't, I don't have a side for this right now. I just wanted to check, in, check out and see how the cooking goes. You want to demonstrate the cooking. Of course, you want to have some kind of a nice side to go along with this great wine and uh, steak. But essentially, I just want to show you that the cooking center and how it looks. We cook inside. It cooks and look at that, huh? That's like a perfectly cooked center. We have a thin little sear and you don't have a big amount of temperature change from the place of the sear to the center of the steak which means that you have maintained all the juices in there. You haven't overcooked. You just have a layer on the outside. And of course now the taste test. So let's cut a little piece. Now this isn't fair at all. I understand. I wish you guys were here so you could actually test this yourselves, but I'm sure you can make it at home as well. Of course, getting the Wagyu at five is gonna be hard, but again, it goes back to the idea of My God, this is so juicy so buttery. It's all because of the um, proper marbleization inside the Spagoo steak. The A5 is a wonderful piece of meat. <laughs> okay, okay, I won't torture you anymore. I'm sure that you now are totally excited to try this technique at home and believe me, you will get as good of a quality, if not better quality steak than what you would find in a high-end steakhouse. And the key, however, is again going back to the meat. Find good quality meat. Okay, thanks for hanging in there with me until the end of this video. And if you've made it so far, do me a favor and drop a comment below and let me know how you feel about me mixing content here on this dental channel. Obviously, uh, this is a little bit out of the ordinary, but I figured, you know, the goal of this channel is to learn together and we could learn about root canals, why not cooking as well and many other topics and different kinds of things. Anyway, I hope this was interesting at least for you and you may have learned something new. And uh, until the next video, let's all stay healthy.